The concept of an Archimedes screw is quite common, where a screw turns in a tube and that carries items from one end to the other, typically up an incline, either water or grain or sand or another particle material. But what about if the tube turned and the screw stayed still? Would it still work? Well, if you think you know the answer, put your answer in the comments right now and see if you were right at the end of the video. I 3D printed my screw drive and I was really happy with how this came out. I didn't use any support material, but due to the progressive nature of the screw, the overhang is actually much less than it looks and the print came out really, really well. I printed the parts in PLA with a 0.3mm layer height, a 0.5mm nozzle and around 15% infill and you can see that overhang's working really quite well. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects so check out my channel for more 3D printing and check out 3dfuel.com. I wanted to make my screw really tall and the printer isn't tall enough so I just printed two of those and then glued those together with super glue and the activator to make one really tall screw and that means we can properly see if the mechanism works or if it doesn't. I bought an acrylic tube from eBay cut to the right length. We need some access at the top so that the balls can be ejected. So now we can do a crude test and see if we spin the tube if the balls will rise to the top. So let's fill that up with ping pong balls. If we give the tube a spin, we can see that it does kind of work and the balls rise to the top. However, I have to spin it really fast and keep spinning it to stop them falling down again. So I think what we need is a lot more balls and some sort of sump so that we can keep feeding balls in the bottom. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the test. I 3D printed a catcher which fits on the bottom of the tube and that's got two scoops so that it can scoop balls out of a sump and try and sort of push them into the tube and drive them up the screw with any luck. So this is printed in one massive piece, again with no support material, and apart from a couple of defects, that's come out fine. I need some sort of big dish to put all the balls in, so I'm using this Captain America shield. It does have some obstructions in the middle where the strap was attached that might stop the balls getting pushed in, but for now it'll have to do. So I've put my catcher in the middle and I can just about spin that round. Although it's gonna be quite hard to spin on center, it should be a good test. So let's fill that with ping pong balls and give it a spin. Well it seems to work but it's very hard to spin on centre and I'm not sure how well it's going to work if we were to motorise it and how fast we'd have to spin it. So I'm going to use a lazy Susan to keep everything on centre and print some more mechanics so that we can do a proper test. The first part attaches to the lazy Susan and that's got various features including this step so the lazy Susan can rotate freely without dragging on the flat surface. This fits onto the bottom of the catcher and that means it extends it up so that we can put a drive system underneath it and essentially we have a raised platform with a motor drive underneath. Most of my parts fit together with self-tapping screws and that means I can get them apart again if I need to if we need to make any modifications and I know that we need to come back and put either a drive gear or a drive pulley on that piece with the lazy Susan attached. I 3D printed a big base for the whole machine and that has another lump attached which is in fact glued on and that will bring the screw up to the correct height so that it matches the height of the catcher that's now sat on the Lazy Susan and its base. The Lazy Susan is screwed down with four countersunk self-tapping screws and I've actually put little washers under each one so that we've raised the Lazy Susan up and that means that the inside can turn freely without there being any friction on the base. So now our catcher can fit back on and that brings that up to the same height as the base of the screw so when those balls enter they get pushed into the bottom of the screw. There's also now this base to be fitted and I've left a hole in there so that we can fit the drive system in later. Once that's screwed together it's time to fit the base of the tube and the catcher onto the Lazy Susan and you'll notice I've left these holes so that we can get the screws in from both sides of the Lazy Susan and attach everything together. And again I've spaced this out with some washers just to get that spacing exactly right. 
That leaves us with the catcher at the same height as the base for the screw and a place to put the drive system with everything mounted on the Lazy Susan bearing. So hopefully now balls will be able to get pushed inside and driven up the screw, but we'll have to see how that goes when the rest of it's together. Now we can install the screw at the right height and install the tube and now everything should turn on centre with a perfect gap between the tube and the screw and that moves really freely. So the black base remains stationary but the inside turns with the catcher and the tube but the screw also remains stationary. So now hopefully that friction will help push the balls in and drive them up the screw. But we'll have to see how that goes and don't forget you can still put your answers in the comments before the end of the video. We definitely need an edge on this to stop the balls just falling out and so we can build up a sump of balls that are in reserve to get pushed up the tube. So I've made these three parts that fit on the base and of course there's a gap there so that we can still drive the base with a belt drive or some sort of gearing. Well this works much better than expected as you can see there without even spinning the tube very fast it's definitely pushing the balls up the screw there and catching them out of the sump and they don't seem to fall back down too easily as long as there's enough balls to back them up and get pushed in behind them. So I'm really surprised this actually works as I only really tried this as an experiment and I didn't think anything would actually happen myself. Now that works really well, we can motorise it and drive it consistently. So I'm printing a big T5 pulley and we're going to make this a belt drive because belts are quite forgiving instead of gears grinding together. And also I've no idea what motor we're going to use yet or how it's going to be fitted to drive through the gap I've left. So that's quite a good push fit onto the bottom there and eventually that'll just be glued on as well. And that means we can drive through the gap with a big belt which I've purchased and you can see that T5 pulley turning nicely there. So that seems to work quite well, now we just need to find a suitable motor. I found a motor out of my spares box, it's far too big to fit up the other way and in fact it's not attached at all at the moment, it's just tensions by being clipped on the edge there and gravity holding it down. And this is a motor from Gimson Robotics, it's the 13.7 to 1 variety of the 52mm gearhead motor, it's got lots of power and should have no problems running for a very long time. Well, it looks a bit like an ice cream maker or something, but I think that's turning at just the right rate to push the balls in. It's really similar to how I turned it manually, and I don't think we need to go much faster. Before we can give it a test, there's only one more piece, which is a kind of catcher that fits on the stationary screw at the top, and that's designed to catch the balls as they fall out. So let's fill it up and see what happens. So looking pretty good, lots of balls are coming out the top and they're actually moving up at quite a high rate considering how slowly the whole thing is turning. I wonder if we spun it two or three times faster what would happen, although I probably couldn't fill up the base with balls quick enough to keep backing up the balls that are rising and falling out at the top. I was pretty surprised by the results so I did some further research and came across this Tom Scott video 
where he demonstrates exactly the same concept using grain. And as we can see there, the tube is rotating, the screw is stationary, but the grain still rises to the top until it all spills out. And apparently this is a patented commercial system called the Old Elevator, which is in use around the world. There are several advantages to a system like this, including not needing a tight seal between the screw and the tube, and that means things don't get ground into fine powders that can become explosive. But I'll put the link to Tom's video in the description to this video, and you can check out more details there. And the reason this works is because if you can spin all those particles, in this case ping pong balls, then they go around and that makes them go round the screw, which makes them rise to the top. I'm pretty surprised though that it actually gets started properly and any of them go in there and actually rise to start with, with more filling from the back, which is probably why I think I thought it wouldn't work at all in the first place. But there we go. So I'm going to be publishing the CAD for this if you want to build one yourself. It's in STP stroke step format. So it's a solid model that means you can modify it really easily, unlike just having meshes like an STL. So I will be doing more simple engineering concepts like this. The plan is to make another machine that passes balls on, and typically that's called a great ball contraption, and typically they're made of Lego, there's lots of those on YouTube, but mine are going to be 3D printed, and every single one is going to demonstrate an engineering concept. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or for a YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description below. And if you like the video, please like it. And if you'd like to subscribe, then subscribe for more videos, which are mostly about robotics and also about engineering concepts. All right, that's all for now.